Hello everyone, and today we're going to be changing our spark plugs on our Nissan Frontier, and it has a little bit of involvement because the whole intake manifold has to come right out. And if you look closely, it's because these ignition coils are right under the manifold. And as well as, we're going to be changing our PCV valve as well. And I know this seems like a lot of labor, but it's worth it because when I got a quote from the dealership, they quoted me almost $1,000 just to do this job. And we're going to knock this out today. And the products we'll be using for today, we have our spark plug and PCV valve, thread locking compound, flathead screwdriver, socket wrenches, our 10 millimeter sockets, 12 millimeter sockets. We have our 14 millimeter spark plug socket, and that's because these are tiny spark plugs. We have our anti-seize for our spark plugs. We have our needle nose pliers, torque wrench, of course, our extensions. And then we have our plastic scraper, a paint marker, an adjustable wrench, some soap and water solution, and a cloth. And the first thing we're going to focus on, let's go ahead and go to the fuse panel underneath the hood. And it's this black box you see right here. And there's two clips on the side, and that's how we're going to take the cover off. And let's see if I can wiggle it out. Come on. There we go. And if we look under the cover here, we want the ninth fuse over. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth fuse, which is our fuel pump. We're going to want to remove this because we want to go ahead and depressurize our fuel system. So we'll go ahead and go to the ninth one over. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we'll grab our needle nose pliers. And we can be very gentle with this and it should pull straight out. Come on. There we go. And I'll shake the camera a little bit and we'll just set that aside. Then we're going to make our way back inside the vehicle and try to turn over the engine. And one more time, just be safe. There we go, so all the fuel should be out of the fuel lines. And just to keep dust out of the fuse box, let's go ahead and put the cover back on. Let's see if I can wiggle it back in there. There we go. And now we can begin removing parts. We're going to start with the air duct and resonator right here. This whole piece has to come out. And to remove this air duct and resonator, we need to take off this part of the air duct from the air case, this bolt, this one right here, and we'll go over to the resonator. Let's see if I can move the camera. We have this one under here, and then go on the other side. Should be one more right here. So those are the four bolts that need to come out. So let's go ahead and grab our 10 millimeter socket and start removing all these bolts. And we'll start with the easiest one. So there's one, and we'll get the second one. There's two. Go down to the resonator, see if I can get the small socket in there. Loosen it up, and there's three. And we'll get the last one. We'll see if we can loosen this one up. Almost there, and there's four, and I'm leaving the bolts in there. And then we can go ahead and disconnect the air duct from the air cleaner box, and that just unscrews, and we'll set that aside. And with everything unbolted, this whole thing should lift right out, and there we go. And we'll go ahead and set that in the back of the truck. Then let's move to the air cleaner case, remove these three clips, and this comes off very easily. They just unclip, just like so, pull outward, and then push down to get from under those supports. And I'm doing it just a little difficult. And that comes right out. And as you can see, the filter is still clean. And now this next step is optional if you'd like. You can go ahead and mark your hoses using your paint marker. I'm going to go ahead and do this on three hoses just to show you how I'm going to do it just for a few spots. So the first example, I'm going to show you the PCV hose. I'm just going to go ahead and mark it so you know which hose goes where. So there's one. But what I'm really going to use this for is right down here. Let's see if I can get a little closer. And I'm going to have two hoses. I'm going to mark left and then mark right. So you might get the R right there. There we go. And I'll zoom the camera in so you can see what I'm looking at. So when I take off those two hoses, I know one belongs on the right and one belongs on the left. Very simple. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the mass airflow sensor right here. And we can just go ahead and disconnect this. So push on the connector and then go ahead and pull out. And then we're going to perform our same step on the electronic throttle control. Let me see if I could zoom in. And we're going to disconnect the wiring harness from the connector same way. So push on the clip and pull out. There's another one. And then right under that electronic throttle control, I'm going to put down some paper towels because we need to remove those two hoses that we marked left and right. So we're going to grab your needle nose pliers and we should be able to press down on this clamp and wiggle it towards us. And come on. There we go. And just work it down the hose just a little bit. And then we should be able to pull on the hose. You might have to get a little turn. And there we go. And a little bit of coolant comes out, but that's expected. And we're going to do the same thing for the left side as well. And I know the camera angle is kind of piss poor, but that's what we got for now. So take that clamp, bring down the hose, pull and twist the hose, and there's the other one. Let's go ahead and move on and loosen up our air duct clamps. 
and all you need is a flathead screwdriver. We'll start with the one that's at the electronic throttle control. And let's move this one fuel hose out of the way. And all we have to do is go counterclockwise on this one clamp and just tilt it loosen up. And we'll do the same thing with the other side as well. Now this one I'm gonna show you if you wanted to, you could take the whole thing off. So I'm gonna loosen a little bit more and then you turn it. Let's see if I can loosen up just enough to get a little turn. Come on, come on, there we go. And this whole thing is pretty loose so it should come right out. So all you have to do is give it a little pull and a little twist. Come on, there we go, there's one side and there's the other and we're just gonna set that aside. Then let's go ahead and move on to our EVAP service port hose. So do the same thing, we're gonna take our needle nose pliers and see if we can get that clamp moved down the hose a little bit. There we go, so we disconnected that next hose, put that aside. And since we're in the same vicinity, let's go ahead and remove the brake booster hose. So same thing, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Let me grab my needle nose pliers and we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go ahead and come on, push that down, move it down the hose a little bit and then turn and pull on the hose. Come on, come on, and there it is. And same reason, since we're in the area, let's go ahead and disconnect the EVAP canister purge valve harness. That's a big word. And I wanna go ahead and disconnect this from the intake manifold itself. So give that a little pull and set that aside. And the last harness we have to disconnect is our fuel injector harness. And this is under your air filter. So that should disconnect and pull apart just like so. Now the next area we're gonna focus on is our fuel line. That's this line right here. We're gonna leave it connected though, but we are gonna remove our quick connector cap just like that so we don't lose it. And I'm gonna disconnect it from its retaining clips just so I have room to maneuver it. And then our last hose that we have to disconnect is our PCV hose. This is probably one of the easiest hoses to get to. And same thing, needle nose pliers. And see if we can pull on that clamp. There we go, move it up the hose. A little bit more, and just give it a nice pull. And there we go. Now here comes the unbolting of the intake manifold. We're gonna start with one of the supports on the driver's side. And it's gonna be this bolt you see right here. And it's gonna be a 12 millimeter bolt. So let's grab our 12 millimeter socket and extension bar. And let's see if we can get our hands in there and see if we can remove that one bolt. And it's not too hard to get to, but with the camera angle, it's kind of hard to see. So loosen it up and see if I can do it without dropping it. And there we go. And for this next section, I wanna show you the nuts and bolts we're gonna be getting to before we start undoing them, because on camera, you won't be able to see them. So on the left is a nut, which you can't see off camera. Then the middle one is bolt number two, and I'll go to our center one. Center one's gonna be a bolt number one, as well as it's known as bolt six, and I'll show you why later when you torque it. And the last ones, you have bolt three, and all the way to the right, which is out of cam camera sight, is nut five. And these numbers are very important when removing and installing the screws. So we're gonna go in reverse order. So we're gonna start with bolt number six, so that came out. Then we're gonna work on nut number five, which is closest to you. And see if I can get that one out, there we go. Then we're gonna go on nut number four. So the outer ones are nuts. And that's number four, and I didn't drop it. And then we're gonna focus on bolt number three. And make sure you keep track of which bolts go where because two and three is different from six. And then the last one we'll go ahead and get is bolt number two. And now we're ready to remove our intake manifold. And this may fight you, but it'll come right off and then go ahead and put it aside. And you won't be able to remove it all the way out of the engine bay because of the fuel line. Now we can focus on our ignition coils. And we'll start with the first one, the one closest to us. So let's go and remove the ignition coil by using our 10 millimeter socket. So we'll loosen that right up. And this comes off very easily, it's nothing difficult. So there's the screw, set that aside. Ignition coil pops right out. We'll inspect it, it's nice and clean. And then we can grab our 14 millimeter spark plug socket and extension bar and go ahead and loosen up our spark plug. So let's see if I can loosen it up. Come on, there we go. And the rest of it should come out by hand. It's got a lot of thread on it, so give it a second and it's got a magnet on it and it came right out that looks awesome and we can compare the two if you look at them doesn't look too bad but the newer one does look better all right now it's time to grab our anti seize throw just a dab on there you don't need much a dab will do you and then take your finger and go ahead and spread around the anti seize and you want to stay on the upper part of the threads don't go too far to the ends and make sure it's nicely even distributed and that looks pretty good doesn't look too shabby at all yeah very nice then go ahead and place the spark plug back inside your 14 millimeter spark plug socket. And it's got a magnet there, so it's going to hold it really well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it back in place. And I'm going to go down very gently just to make sure I don't cross thread this. I'm going to start by hand, and it looks like it threaded down very nice and very smooth. That's what I want. And then I'm going to hand tight it. There we go. 
And now we can grab our torque wrench, which is set to 168 inch pounds, and torque the spark plug down. Come on. There we go. That is beautiful. And now we can reinstall our ignition coil. So all you have to do is put it back in the same way it came out. And make sure I can get it in there. There we go. And it should press right down. That's beautiful. And then go ahead and put a little bit of thread locking compound on your bolt. And then go ahead and tighten that down. And we're going to finger tight it. I'm going to use, go ahead and use a socket since I can. There we go. Now I'll grab my torque wrench. I'm going to tighten it down to 62 inch pounds until you hear the click. And there we go. So that's one down, two to go. And now on the second one, I'm going to repeat the same steps. But on this one, I'm going to disconnect the connector that goes to the ignition coil just so I can take it out. And all you have to do is push on the connector and pull out just like that. And then just repeat all the same steps. And with all the spark plugs replaced, now we can replace our PCV valve. Now this requires a 23 millimeter wrench, but I want to use the adjustable because that's all I had on hand. But you can use whatever you have. It doesn't require a lot of torque to take it off and put it back on. Only 22 inch pounds. And it's just that easy. And now we can go ahead and make our way back to the engine block and clean up where the inlet holes are. So I'm going to grab my plastic scraper and a little bit of soap and water solution and clean up this area. We want to get rid of any old gasket or any debris that's around that area. And I'm going to try to scrape away from the hole as much as possible. And now that with the engine block clean, now we can focus on the intake manifold. So let's go and remove the old gasket material, and this should just pull right off. So let's see if we can get this first one off. And it comes off fairly easy. I'm just being gentle. And there's one piece. And there's number two, number three, and number four. And just like the engine block, we're going to clean up the intake manifold and get any debris or any leftover residue left on it. So let's go ahead and take our plastic scraper and there shouldn't be much on the intake manifold since the gasket material was already taken off. We're just getting up any debris off of it. And that looks pretty clean. And not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and take my flathead screwdriver and get in between the grooves where the gasket goes. Again, I want to make sure I get everything out of there. And I'll loop it around and take a nice fresh part of the cloth and do the same thing on the top side of it. And it's just that simple. <laughs> That intake manifold looks pretty clean. Let's go ahead and install our new gasket. And this goes right in. All you have to do is push it right between the grooves. And see if I can do it. There we go. And one little area in the side. All right, so there's one. And there's two. And there's three. Last one. And there's four. So let's go ahead and lift up this whole intake manifold. There we go. And we're just going to try to set it in place before we align it. So let me see if I can get it right on top of everything. And come on, let's see if we can get at least somewhat decent spot. And it looks pretty good. And now we're ready to slide the intake manifold towards the driver's side through the studs where nuts four and five came off. So I'm going to see if I could do this while not knocking over a camera. And okay, so it's through the studs. Let me give that a little bit more push to the right. Come on. And ah, there we go. Beautiful. That looks pretty good. And with the intake manifold seated in the right position, I'm going to apply a little bit of thread locking compound to the studs. I already did the one that's close to the firewall. And I'm also going to do the bolts as well and install all these nuts and bolts, but I'm not going to tighten them down yet. And with all these nuts and bolts installed, now we can torque them down. I'm going to start with bolt number one with 168 inch pounds. And then number two, and then three, and then I want to go to nut number four with 96 inch pounds, and then five with the same mount, and then back number one with 168 inch pounds. And now we can reinstall the intake manifold support bolt, so apply a little bit of thread line compound, and we'll tighten this one up and torque that to 168 inch pounds as well. 
And that's beautiful. Then I'm going to return back to my fuel line and reinstall my quick connector cap. And again, it's just so I didn't lose it. There we go. We'll turn that around. Very nice. And then we'll move over to our ETC actuator water hoses and install those. And it doesn't matter which order you take these off or pour them on. I'm just doing it in this specific order. And I'm just doing it because it's convenient for me. So left and right is complete. Looks very nice. And since I'm right here, I'll go ahead and also connect my PCV hose. And same thing, it pushes right on and move our clamp right back in place. And then we'll take our air duct and go ahead and install this one back in. And put the fuel line back in its retaining clip. And then go ahead and shimmy this back on. Come on. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and take our flathead screwdriver and we'll tighten up these clamps. Let me turn that back in place. And we'll tighten this up till it's snug. I don't really have a torque spec for, for this one. And then we'll go to this side and do the same thing as well. Put that back in its spot. And just a few more turns. There we go, nice and snug. Then we'll come back and reinstall our EVAP service port hose. And that should wiggle right back on. Come on. Helps to have four hands. And that looks not good and tight. It looks nice. And then we'll move right on to our brake booster hose since we're right in the same vicinity. And this one's just as easy to get to. Take our new nose pliers and see if I can move that clamp forward. Yeah, very nice. That came on just very easy. And with the hoses complete, let's go ahead and do our harnesses. We'll start with the ETC harness. Then we'll go to our mass airflow sensor and reconnect that as well. Very nice. Go to our fuel injector one. And that snapped right in just as easy as well. And then we'll go right back at the top and go back to our EVAP canister purge valve harness. And that looks nice. And then plug that back in. There we go. And we're almost done. So let's go ahead and install our air cleaner case. And as you can see, it's still clean, so it's not too dirty, not too many fingerprints. I'm going to try to be careful and not touch it too much. And then go very low and get it with under those supports and then lift up. And just like that. And then go ahead and snap it in with those three clips. So that's two. And last one, three. Very nice. And now we can grab the whole air duct and resonator assembly, and we'll go ahead and put that back in place. I'm just going to set it in place before I bolt it down. And we'll go ahead and tighten up that air duct right to my left hand. There we go. Give that a nice turn. And then we'll make sure everything's seated properly. Eh, that looks not too shabby. So let's go ahead and grab our 10 millimeter socket and some thread locking compound and go ahead and apply a little bit to each one of these bolts and tighten them down. So we got a little bit right there. Tighten that one down as well. And we're going to torque this down to 49 inch pounds. Beautiful. Now let's go to the resonator side. And now this one's weird. This one requires 83 inch pounds. And then back to this bolt, a little bit of thread lock compound. And we'll tighten this one up. Almost there. Very nice. And then we'll go ahead and torque it down to 49 inch pounds. Beautiful. And for our last step, let's make our way back to the fuse box and reinstall fuel pump fuse. Now it's a 15 amp fuse and it's our ninth one in, so it should be the one in the empty slot. And push it right in. Very nice. Looks good. And then reinstall the cover until it snaps in. Beautiful. And now we can go for a test run. So we went ahead and took the truck around for a little bit and we want to check to make sure there's no hesitation, no idling problems, and no check engine lights. So we drove around for about 10 minutes to make sure it's nice smooth driving and it looked good. And after a smooth drive, let's go under the hood and check for any leaks or any issues whatsoever. We want to make sure there's no fuel leaks, no water hose leaks, and none of the vacuum hoses are getting stuck on anything and make sure there's nothing vibrating against any of your equipment. And looking around, everything looks pretty good. This is a very good sign. Well, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.